I'm alive. <laughs> So today, my dear sewing friends, I'm going to sort of, you know, flex my pattern making muscle. And last week, I dyed some fabric and made some pants. And the week before that, I tried my luck at hand sewing an entire garment, and it actually went really well. But today is really special, really dear and close to my heart, because I lived in UK for a period of time. So all of my Mancunians out there, big shout out to you. And as you know, Queen celebrated her jubilee this past weekend. And as always, around any famous person, there's a ton of drama and things going on. So we're not here for that. We're gonna leave it all behind. But what I do want to take a closer look at and sort of dissect and recreate is the dress. That dress that Kate wore to one of the celebration days of this jubilee. And yes, it's quite yellow, but I think the design of the bodice is very interesting. So let's have some fun with it. This video has been sponsored by Skillshare, a bit more about them a little bit later. And uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that I only have one day for this entire project. I'm gonna get moving and um, the first thing that I will actually do is I will take a closer look at the dress itself and sort of peel away the layers like you would peel an onion, for example. And I do that because a ton of uh, designs out there might seem very complicated at a first glance, but when you peel away those layers, they become very simple. And then you can really just kind of divide them in steps and recreate them in the most simple way possible. I might be wrong about this one, but we'll see. So looking at the bodice itself at the first layer, I see no bust art, which makes me think that they took the bust art and they pivoted it into the waist art in order to create those beautiful folds that you see underneath that crisscross element. So that would be step number one in recreating this look. I'm gonna go ahead, grab my big binder, take my bodice block out of it, and transfer that onto a new piece of paper. And interestingly enough, my bodice block is without a waist dart just because I barely ever sew with waist darts, so I don't have them. Therefore, I'm gonna go ahead, quickly mark them on my pattern, and then once that is done, I'm gonna pivot the bust dart into the waist dart that I just created. If you like to draft your own patterns and you want to try your hand at this as well, you can use any woven bodice block that you have as long as it has darts that you can actually work with. Once that is done, it is going to look like that. And I decided to trace both sides of the bodice because I'm thinking to put that on the mannequin that I have and to play around with the waistline on the mannequin. And here I also wanted to try something new, not necessarily something super new. I actually had this for a while. So this, this is what I usually use for all of my pattern making that you see in my videos. This is medical tracing paper. I get it off Amazon. And the roll is usually enough uh, for about, oh, say six to nine months. This is Swedish sewing paper, if I'm not mistaken on the name. And I had it for a while and it has a woven texture, therefore you can actually sew through it and you can play with it in terms of the pattern design a lot longer than you could with medical tracing paper because that one will tear real quick. This one is almost like something between fabric and paper. So for those who sew, this could be a useful thing. All right, it's time to put this on. Now I have to get these two little flaps situated in the way that Kate's dress is made. And I believe from what I can see here, there's two pleats um, and then they go a little bit past her bust actually. So I might finagle a little bit with these darts just, just to see how do I want to situate those pleats and what would be the best way to go about it. Now, I usually don't use a dress form, and this one is actually not a dress form. It's a decorative mannequin. Therefore, if you see something not lining up, it's because it's not my size. But I have it, and I had it for many years, and it's nice to have something to pin your design on so that we can see how it actually looks. So while I was at it, I went ahead and I marked new neckline because this one from the original bodice block is just way up there, up to the neck. And then I marked the final position of the folds that I was happy with. And now I have to figure out the crisscross detail. So I think it is about, I would say, I would 
let's say three inches down the side seam. That's from what I can gauge from the photo, I'm assuming. Three inches down the side seam and it ends right, right at her waist. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's on purpose because the skirt obviously is a different pattern piece. So I think this is the piece. But then the, the other end of this crisscross detail goes below her waist to cover um, everything, like all the seams and all the pleating that's going on over here. So I'm assuming that's how it was done. Bam! And... Bam! was a knob on the bottom of the dress form that was missing which caused the legs on which the dress form stands to shift apart and the rest you saw on your screen so not everything goes as planned but my husband um, did assist and he installed a new knob so that is fixed and speaking of the front bodice of the design it's looking really nice all right so when it comes to a sleeve from what I can see here it's a set in two piece sleeve and I will probably go just for a single piece sleeve and probably a short one as well and when it comes to the skirt of the dress it's a circle skirt uh, probably a quarter or maybe one eighth of a circle skirt um, I definitely would need to see but I don't wear dresses and as you guys know everything that I make in my videos I wear so I will definitely have to play around with the design and see what I'll come up with. So stick around and we'll see how it comes out. So I had a variety of fabrics pre-laundered before I started the drafting of this project because I knew I was going to be in a time crunch, but um, I have an issue with all of them. So from what you see over here, there is an option that you haven't seen yet, and I think I'm gonna go with that. So I believe that the fabric is seersucker, it definitely uh, feels and looks like one for sure. And it might seem like such an unexpected choice for a design like that, especially when we already see this dress on camera. Hate. and in her case I believe it is made out of pretty thick material it looks like it I actually haven't done the research on what it was made out of because to me that wasn't necessarily an important point but um, but yeah when you look at something that is your inspiration sometimes it's really hard to just take a step back and think okay I am inspired by that but I would like to apply my own twist on it because as I mentioned I don't really wear dresses I will never wear a design like that if it was a complete replica of Kate's dress, but I want to make it my own. I want to make it more wearable. This is a perfect segue into today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I'm sure you've heard about Skillshare from me for quite a bit. We've been working for a really long time. I love using their platform. I've assumed they like working with me. And if you're not familiar with what Skillshare is all about, basically it's a learning platform for creative people like you and I. And they have like thousands of classes there on a variety of topics but if you're watching this video chances are you probably like design and fashion so you will find a ton of things on there that are right up your alley so you can either you know find a new hobby or a new interest or dive a little bit deeper into the one that you already have definitely check out David Vasovic's class on Skillshare the name is the inspiration where fashion design begins and it's a really interesting thought on how to be inspired yet to really translate that into whatever you're making because it doesn't have to be clothing it can be something else it can be art I've done a ton of art using Skillshare tutorials I've done embroidery I've done mixed media I think I've mentioned before that when I do tutorials that's quite a lot so when I log in into Skillshare 
sure I actually enjoy somebody else telling me what to do. So it's really nice, at least from that perspective, just to sit down. Classes are really well structured. There's no ads. So it's really nice. It's all about learning. And usually you also get like a takeaway material or like homework or, or an additional information uh, about the class as well. So there is a ton of things that you can do on Skillshare and I truly enjoy the platform and you can do as well. Give them a try. You'll get one month free of Skillshare membership if you click on the link that you see in the info box below. I truly hope that you enjoy and um, let's see how's the sewing going. So here I was attaching peplum because I wanted to see how it's going to look before I commit to this length and I wanted to see if I need to cut it a little bit shorter and adjust both the front and back pattern piece. And here's the front piece and I have the folds in here and I did cut this peplum a little bit longer, maybe about an inch longer than uh, my pattern that I drafted because I just wanted to make sure that um, what if I let out the darts a little bit, uh, maybe I wanted you know a little bit extra extra room or ease in my pattern. Anyway, so the pebble was a little bit longer and then I thought, well, what if I pleat that extra length in here, make two little pleats to match the two little pleats, little folds of the front pattern piece. How cute that is going to be when it all comes together. So that is my improvised decision of the moment. The sewing was a very smooth sailing. It was pretty straightforward. And by the way, if you are a member of this channel, then definitely check out this week's Members Extra because we're going to be diving deeper. I'll show you the insides of the actual garment. We're gonna be talking through some of the key moments of the construction and on sewing. So yeah, definitely take a look and thank you so much for being a member. So yeah, sewing was pretty straightforward until it came to construct the back pattern pieces. Not the back pattern pieces themselves, but the zipper. Cheese and crackers? You gotta be kidding me. Now it turns out that in this whole box of zippers that I have and that I have accumulated over the years and I'm slowly using them up, I don't have a single white, blue, or even nude invisible zipper that I needed for my project. And I was so frustrated because I was really convinced that I had one. And besides, this was an impromptu project, so it wasn't planned. Therefore, I didn't make my way to Joann's or Hobby Lobby or any other Sewing Notions retailer where I could pick up a zipper. And going and picking one up wasn't, uh, that wasn't an option because that was uh, way past their closing time. So I found three zipper options that I had on hand that I thought could have worked, but not everything turns out as we planned, right? Oh, I don't think the zipper is going to happen, like seriously. It's just not long enough. It's just not long enough in order for me to comfortably put this on without like either squeezing myself through or like getting my makeup all over the neckline. So, and I don't have any other zipper that could go into it. Regardless of that, I'm ready for the final reveal. Like what? How did that zipper got resolved? Well, I actually went ahead and I did baste it in just temporarily so that way I could actually get it on myself and zip it up. So if you see the corners uh, over here of the shoulders rising a little bit, that's just because the zipper doesn't reach all the way back up. So once this video is published and once I'm done with my deadline, I can go ahead and make my way to the fabric and sewing retailer and I can pick up the necessary length zipper and then I will install it. But for now, let's just go ahead and take a look how it turned out. It. I really, really do. I think that the design is fun, but fabric makes it come down back to earth a little bit. And that way you can wear it every day. You can also dress it up. You can dress it down. A very versatile piece that looks really, really nice as well. And it pairs really well with these wide leg, dark blue linen pants that I made last week. So definitely check out this video right over here. There is an embarrassing story about these pants. So go ahead, check it out and I'll see you right there. Bye.